Hello everybody and welcome to another oil painting video. I am your host John and let's get started. It is, I understand, December 17th, 2023 and I'm in the Midwest about, I don't know, 40 miles west of Chicago and it's not sunny out but it's not, you know, five degrees either but I'm going to do a nice summer scene. I'm already itching for spring. So, we're gonna do is take our Elkid Medium, which is made by M. Graham. Let me get this a little closer here so I don't have my head in the way all the time. Okay, so we're gonna take Sap Grain and we're gonna take Payne's Gray. And we're gonna do kind of like our normal. And we're gonna have a really diluted mixture. Kind of lean. Actually, probably about 50-50 on this, okay? Because you figure the Payne's Gray is just a really, really dark uh, blue. So once I hit it with yellow, it's going to turn green anyway. Like I said, it's going to be a really, it's going to be a very green painting here. And um, I don't want anything to take away from it. So, let's see here. up here Let's do something like that okay and then what we're gonna do these trees up here make a little taller over here not sure if you're going to see sky over there or not. And over here, I don't know, maybe we'll make a couple of real big son of a gun over here. Yeah, maybe we'll make these come all the way down to here. And this will be like a fourth. So there won't be any sky back here. Little bit over here. And then, yeah, we're going to make this a fourth. And as you can see, this is a very diluted mixture. The reason I'm doing this is this is just a sketch. You know, I'm not using any opaque color here. I'm not using anything that's real committal yet, okay? And what I'm doing, other than making a mess, and I'm giving you an idea of what I'm doing. So this is gonna go away. I don't like the way that came out. So what we're gonna do we're going to keep it the same light mixture, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to make the water go right over this. And then when I put in the trees with the opaque colors and everything else, I'll go right over it. So the water is going to come from behind here. That's kind of what I'm thinking as I'm going. So now, I'm same dirty brush. So I'm just going to add my French Ultramarine. And I'm just going to take it straight across. Okay. See, this is the beauty of it, okay? The way you start here with that real thin mixture, look at this etch garbage, okay? It didn't work out. It had something in my mind, no big deal. This I like, okay? I wasn't, that wasn't in my mind when I started. I was going to have something similar to this, go down and maybe up again and kind of have the convergence like that. And then I started filling it in a little bit more than I was going to. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, a deep, dense forest might look good. You got these trees over here. I'm not going to have any mountains in this one. So I'll make these trees even bigger. You can figure it out as you go. And that's the beauty of doing it when you have it like this. Because this is nothing. You can cover that easily. Okay? So. One of the beauties of oil painting is because it takes so damn long to dry. Now these are... Um, relatively quick drying with the algae medium, but it's still, it's not in minutes like an acrylic. It's not like watercolor. Where watercolor, it's hard to redo stuff when you mess it up. And um, watercolors, I have a tremendous amount of respect for the people who do watercolors very well. 
I am not among those. I'm okay with my watercolor, but I use them mainly for sketching in the field sometimes if I don't want to bring out my, um, if I don't want to bring out my whole oil painting setup. But um, watercolors are a little tough for me. Oil is more my speed. They got a little darker here in the water. As I go. I think that's about it. Not sure how thick I'm going to make that. This I'm going to make some land. The far bank is going to be relatively straight, but not completely. Here's you see the angle. You know, something like that. This, I'm thinking as I'm going, before I put in the water, I told you I'm going to cover this back up with trees and make the trees go, let's say, from here to here, which you still might do. However, I'm liking the idea of maybe, I don't know, I was going to have more trees come up from back here. I'd have to have this a bigger body of water to make a reflection for it, and it shouldn't be a river because you're not going to reflect and water moving this fast. So I'm probably I'm just going to go like that. Basically. There we go. That little faint blue may or may not stay. Don't know. Don't care. One of the beauties of oil painting. One of the many beauties. Okay, that's a little bit of um, everything that I've been using, plus yellow ochre. I'm going to introduce a little bit of brown in here, too. This up here a little bit. Hope everybody had a good weekend. We had my wife's uh, company Christmas party yesterday night. That was really nice. At uh, Bolingbroke Country Club is where they had it. And then um, today we just did our normal stuff. Grocery shopping and getting the house squared away. Called up my folks. Make sure what everybody's doing for Christmas Eve, what everybody's bringing. Laura and I are hosting Christmas Eve this year, and then uh, Mom is doing Christmas Day, so that ought to be fun. Okay. So, let me see what I'm going to do here. Got to go a little bit deeper in. One of the things I'm doing here, getting my perspective a little better. The water just didn't look right. There, that's better. What are the things you can do when the water doesn't look right, when the trees, whatever it doesn't look right to you. If it doesn't look right to you, it's not going to look right to somebody else. So if there's something wrong. So step back a few feet, three, four, five, six feet, whatever the case may be. Check it out. You know, use a critical eye. It doesn't matter. You know, if you mess up, it's oil paint. You just go right over like we've been doing. It's not a big deal. The biggest thing you got to do is make sure you have fun and then keep checking it. If you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong, and it's just not even worth it. And I spent a lot of years not having fun with oil painting and almost quit one time. And I'm just glad I stuck with it because it reminds me of anybody that's played golf. I haven't played golf in maybe... 20 years but I remember I used to play golf and it was the most fun I had being frustrated every once in a while you get a really good shot and then everything else was bad well in painting it's not all that just similar okay you do 10 paintings okay two of them are going to be what you're looking for if once you get experience and you're doing it the other ones you're going to have to improvise you're going to have to 
change this, change that. Some you're going to have to just get rid of completely and start over. And it doesn't matter. That's part of it. It's a fine art. It's the type of thing where you're not going to have it perfect out of the chute every time. It's just, you can't do it. You can't do it. Now what I'm doing, you can see I'm putting in the sky. But you noticed I'm putting in the sky and I'm mixing a lot of green. Okay? Green sky, that's bad, right? No. I just came up with green sky a little while ago. Went in one of my paintings and I thought, wait a minute, that kind of looks good. Left it. I loved it. So, point is, green skies aren't such a bad thing. But here, I want a little bit more blue. There we go. Now this I'm doing real light. And as you can tell, I'm doing a little bit of blending, but not much. Okay. What I'm trying to do here is make sure I got the entire part of the canvas. Thinking out loud. There's going to be some more trees right here, but they're not going to be as tall. They're just going to be almost shrubbery. There's some of these brush marks to make it a little smoother. Here's a little rougher with brush marks. Don't care. That's going to be with foliage. Over here is going to be with fir type trees. So these will be your Christmas tree types. Over here, I'm going to put in some deciduous, some tree trunks, stuff like that. I'm not sure if we're going to go this far down. They might go all the way down. I haven't decided yet. I might have something else here. Not sure. Definitely going to have reeds, flowers coming up on the front river bank, just like I normally do. Might have a few things down here. Haven't figured it out yet. Doesn't matter. Um, one of the things that I'm going to, that I definitely am going to do though, is put a little bit of foliage in here, probably like distant trees. So what I'm going to do, that two inch I'm using is a little bit too much. So I'm gonna go in with my blue, green, Payne's gray, yellow ochre, all that other neat stuff. Mixture. A little darker than that. Remember, blue is a receding color. So it's made for distances. Now, what I'm doing is I'm gonna get just kind of what I want. And then I'm gonna keep tapping it. And what I wanna do with the keep tapping it is to get it really faint. There we go. Hairs. See how faint that is? Those give real nice background trees. Then what I'm going to do is I'll put a few trees in front of it that'll be much darker, much thicker opaque paint. And it'll have that as a real nice background to the trees. I'm going to do the same thing over here because I like the way that turned out. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I know at the moment it looks like I'm making a mess, and I promise you it's not, but it's just part of the process. And you notice I'm not putting a lot of paint on, okay? Keeping a lot of, I'm just continuing to tap in. Sky mixture, you're gonna see all kinds of stuff. Put a little bit of green in there too. A little bit more. Just blend those together by the continuous, continuous taps. There we go. 
Okay, I like that a lot. I know it doesn't look like much right now, but trust me, it will get better. Ooh, from a distance, that really looks good. That really looks good. Okay, so I'm going to need that brush with the same stuff it's got on it now, as is, uh, in a little bit. Actually, I'll start now. Um, take the same brush. I'm not adding any paint. And I'm going to type in, tap in, tap in the foliage here. Basically what this is, I'm getting rid of this stuff and just giving foliage-ish pattern, okay? And it's just going to be something that's going to be later on. It's going to be very subtle when it's all over because opaque paint will cover it. But I don't want this as the background. So when you see into the trees, into this like forest area, okay? You're going to see this, which looks like different, uh, distant foliage as opposed to this, which isn't anything. You know, that's my sketch. And I have no more use for that part of it because I already have it set up. So it doesn't matter now. And a little bit of the blue may or may not show through. I have not decided. Again, it doesn't matter. Wow, this brush is shedding a lot today. Usually that's not the case. It is a cheap brush, but still. Okay. There we go. Tap right into there. There we go. Oh, that looks better already. Okay. So, I understand this looks like a mess at the moment. Like I said, please have patience. It will not stay a mess. Okay, so, first thing I'm going to do, well, not the first, that's, that's long since over. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in some tree trunks here. So, I'm going to use a fan brush. <sighs> tree trunks are cool. Like everything else in the landscape, there's a million different ways to do them. Um, you can just take... A flat brush or a round brush and just draw them in. Fan brush, do the same thing. You can tap it and then I'm going to tap it. I want some stuff like bark and everything else around it. And I'm going to use a mixture of Payne's Gray and Van Dyke Brown. Now, if you look at everything we've been doing, okay, the only thing I added white to to start the opaque process was the sky. Everything else is still a very diluted mixture of oil paint. With these tree trunks, we're gonna start now laying in opaque paint for the rest of it. We're done with the really heavy use of our medium, and now we're gonna start concentrating on our darker colors, our more opaque colors, our richness to the colors, and the colors and the thickness of paint that's gonna bring this painting out. So, opaque is good so it's transparent when you have the reason for it okay so fan brush basic 101 here um, and this is for any kind of thing if you unless you're actually painting down which you can do yeah we'll do one like that okay you start at the top and it's going to be thinner at the top and thicker at the bottom so you have very light pressure at the top and heavier pressure at the bottom if you tap it or if you just paint the stroke. So I'll, I'll do both and show you. This one, we're going to make it a curve. So we're very light up here. And then as you get down, make it thicker. See how that works real nice like that? Okay. Same color mixture. Now we're going to tap it. Very light. And as you get further down, go heavy. Now, I like doing them both ways. Sometimes it depends on what I'm doing, sometimes it doesn't. You see this one is much smoother. This one has a little bit more of the roughness of a tree. I'm going to put highlights on here anyways, so the smoothness isn't going to be obvious. It's not gonna look like, you know, a shaved tree like the top of my, top of my head with no hair. It's not gonna be smooth like that. 
but I do prefer this for these trees, and that's how I'm gonna finish it out. Again, Payne's Gray and uh, Van Dyke Brown. One more big one, and then we're going to take a smaller fan brush, and we're going to do some branches out in each one. But because these are so big the way they are, we're not going to have a ton of them. Do like this. Like curving of my trees. You notice, not one of these, this is the straightest one, and it's still not completely straight. It buckles over there. This one buckles, this one comes down. It's trees. None of them are perfectly straight. Okay, so now, each one has its own little base. And we're gonna fill this in. Flowers, grass, whatever the case may be. I haven't decided yet. What's kind of cool about painting, one of the, as I've said before, million things that are cool about painting. And if you haven't cast, I absolutely love painting. I just, it's just so much fun. But one of the many things I love about it, when you're doing a bigger painting like this, which is um, 18 by 24, oh, where's my towel? It gives you a little bit more time to figure out what you're going to do. Uh, smaller paintings, which I do enjoy a lot too, like 5 by 7 and 6 by 8. If you look at my website, you see a lot of small little stuff. Those are very popular with uh, college students. They love buying um, my little five by seven, six by eights and uh, using Velcro, their wood panels, and then they hang them up in their dorm room, like above their little dorm refrigerator and microwave and stuff like that. And it's a good way for a college student on a budget to still buy original art. When I was at uh, my Elmhurst show last year, I was right across from Elmhurst uh, College, from a really nice four year college. I had a lot, half of my, Customers were students at the college that bought these little paintings. And then the other uh, one that I had the most success with them was when I had my show last year in uh, Evanston, Illinois, uh, a walk away from the um, Northwestern campus. Same thing, half of my customers were current college students looking for a couple of pieces of real um, original art for their dorm room. So they uh, love those panels. Okay, so. As I was saying before I get sidetracked, which I easily do, you have a lot of time on a bigger painting to make up your mind what you're going to do. And you get a little 5x7 here, and you don't have anywhere near as much time. But you still have more time than any other medium, because it is oil, so you can still wait. Okay, so. Next thing I do is find my small fan brush. And now I'm going to make a few branches. And these don't have to be anything special because a lot of foliage is going to be covering them. You just want stuff coming out. This is where trees can really be a lot of fun. They can be intimidating too, because it's not coming out exactly the way you want it. But they're trees. If you look in nature at trees, they're all over the place. You know, they don't have perfect anything. That's one of the things that makes them so darn beautiful is they're all over the place. And that's what I'm doing, all over the place. Now, granted, they're very close together, so you're not gonna have a ton. And I am going to put opaque paint over this once I get my highlights on these trees. Right off the 
canvas right into the other one. But basically what I want to do is I want branches to be visible when I put the foliage on, but not everywhere, just in different areas. I'm going to put the green on real thick along with a mixture of, uh, actually I'm probably going to use the same mixture I started with, sac green and Payne's gray. The only difference is it's not going to be well, thin down like that. I'm probably going to use very little, if any, medium, make it much thicker. I'm probably going to get, you can probably tell there's a shine here. There's a lot of oil on these uh, trunks and stuff. Probably going to take a shop towel and get rid of it. It's real excess stuff, so the highlights go on better and the foliage goes on better. Now I'm doing the same thing, but now there's just little stuff. And the reason I'm doing this is because there's got to be other stuff around it. Okay. So, wipe off the brush. I'm not going to clean the brush, just going to wipe it off. Then I'm going to take a shot towel. You saw my video last week. I think it was a mountain range that I did the same thing with. And basically what I want to do is I want to get the paint and the oil and stuff and get that real thick, goppy, gloopy, whatever you want to call it stuff here. I don't even know if that's a word. And I want to get that off so it's a little more thin like it is over here. And what that's going to do is it's going to make it a lot easier to put the highlight on the trunks and it's going to be a lot easier to put the foliage in and I'll show you what I'm talking about so I'm not looking to do everything back here just the main part of the trunk okay see how we do that Again. Do this one with the same one. And I'm not putting heavy pressure on, just enough to where I get that real thick oil off. And that's not oil that I added. Um, it's not my medium that I added extra oil on for this. This is just part of the paint. Okay, so. Now I'm going to go back to my fan brush that I actually put all these in, and I'm going to get the pattern even. What I mean by that is, you can see how in some places it's taken a little bit too much off in areas. Well, that's what I'm going to change right here. I'm not, I didn't add anything. It was a dry brush. Clean brush, too. I actually cleaned it. So I wasn't adding anything extra to it. There we go. Perfect. Now, the next thing is, where's the light coming from? Well, doesn't matter. We don't have mountains, which is usually a good indicator. Uh, the water is going to be a river, so it's going to actually be flowing this way, left to right. These are going to be pine trees, so I'm probably going to put the, um, the highlight yellow maybe on the left, so I'll do it on the left on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take straight white. And I'm going to start at the top and go on the left side. And just tapping. Not tapping hard, just tapping. Okay. Take some more. You want it to be on the edge of whatever it is, so... In this case, it's from the left to the right. So the left edge of the tree trunk is what I want this to go. And then I'll show you how we turn that over. Once we get on the left edge, 
Now, a lot of this is going to be covered. So you're not going to see all of it. Very little of it. Just like the branches. You're not going to see all the branches. Just a little bit of them. But where you do see it, it's going to look a lot more realistic. And that's why we put it on. It's going to be subtle. Okay? But you are going to see it. And even if consciously you don't see something wrong with it, your eyes will. Okay? If there's something that's obviously off, your eye will see it. And your mind might not pick up exactly what it is, but there'll be something wrong when you're viewing the piece. And that's whether it's a landscape, a pet portrait, a human portrait, even abstract. If something's off, your eye will catch it before your subconscious knows what it is, or your, before your conscious knows what it is. So, most of this highlight is going to be covered, but it doesn't matter. Down here, it won't be as much. There's going to be a lot of foliage, but we still need it to look somewhat realistic. I'm not a hyper-realistic painter. I'm a semi-realistic, maybe. Somewhere between there and maybe a little bit of a touch of impressionism. I'm not sure how you would even describe it. I never lost sleep thinking about how I describe it. So what we're going to do is we're not going to add any more paint, but I didn't clean my brush. We're going to take the highlight that's on there and we're going to touch and just very lightly. You don't want to blend it by going heavy, just very lightly. There's your tree. Actually, this one was a little bit more paint than I thought, so I'm going to wipe this off so we don't get a new gobbly gook on the next one. There we go. A little bit bigger. There we go. And there we are. Let me see how that looks from a distance. Okay, that's looking pretty good actually. That's looking pretty good. Okay. There we go. Our tree trunks. Now, you can put highlights on all the branches. But the way I add the foliage is I'll add them onto the branches so you're not going to see anything. Where here you will see some. So I like to pretty much just leave that alone. And you'll see what I mean in a little bit when I start adding the foliage there. Okay. The right side's getting lonely. So, just as promised, sap green, Payne's gray, and a little bit of yellow ochre. Not much, just a little bit. Okay, remember, the blue is our background, so we don't want to cover it all. We want a little bit to be shown through, but not a ton. Similar to this. Now, granted, this is going to have a lot more foliage over it, so in here is going to be a little bit more. So I'll show you what I mean. Doesn't matter where you start from. Just as long as, if you notice, I'm putting it on very thick. It's really right on the edge.
Okay. So the next thing I'm gonna do, wipe off this brush. I've got a little bit more excess paint on than I was anticipating. I'll let that settle for a little bit. Not that it's gonna dry or start to get a film on it or anything like that. No, it's oil paint. Just I'll let that sit for a minute while I do the base. So right now, before I add the highlight and a little bit more, I'm gonna use the fan brush to do that because I'm gonna make a few shapes here and there. I'm gonna get in here with the fan brush. And I'm gonna put some land in. This is the only part of the white canvas that's remaining that's gonna go away real soon. And then once I have that, then I can start the water. And then once I get the water done, we'll do the banks in here, and then this foliage will probably be the last thing I do. Is that a fact? Probably not. <laughs> but it, uh, it's the general idea right now. Okay. So now, yellow ochre, sap green, a little bit of brown, a little bit of blue, a little bit of everything. Now, I'm going to wipe off the brush, not clean it. Just wipe it off. And now I'm going to go straight lemon yellow. What I'm going to do with the straight lemon yellow, it's going to get dirty a little bit from what's on the brush already. I'm also going to bring it into here a little bit. I'm going to start on its own to get a little bright. See how I did that? And then I'm blending upwards just a little bit. And it doesn't matter if it gets into the water because the water reflects its surroundings anyways. So if we just have a little bit of yellow in there, that's fine. And now the last of the white canvas has been covered. If you notice, I'm kind of angling as I'm doing this, just making a little bit hills here and there, a little different stuff. There we go. Yeah, I can deal with that. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, you know how you put highlights and stuff, and this is yellow? Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna keep it that thick too, because I like that rich, thick texture, because that's gonna be like a pasture that nobody brings a lawnmower and keeps trimmed. It's just the wild, okay? I like to imagine creating these places that, you know, nobody's ever been. I'm just taking them out of my imagination. I have no idea if this place even exists, and that's the fun of it. I'm going to take just straight Payne's Gray, and I do just little lines. And these lines just break stuff up. Give it a little bit of interest. Get right down the riverbank. up there. There we go. Yeah, I like that a lot better. Okay. This is coming along nice. I think we will start the water. I'm going to clean a couple of these brushes now. One of the things that I try to stress in each of my videos is you don't have to go crazy cleaning your brushes with your solvents. I don't use toxic solvents anyways. I use Bristol Magic. Um, I buy mine at Blick online. You can get it at Jerry's online as well. Those are the only two places I've ever seen it. It's not ridiculously, ridiculously expensive. 
my apologies for my speech. Um, it cleans the brushes every bit as good as mineral spirits and everything else, but it's biodegradable, no carcinogens, um, no harsh odors of any kind. It's um, not flammable. It's green. Okay. It's perfectly safe in the house because I have a 10 by 20 room in my house that uh, when we bought the house, my wife and I about 12, 13 years ago, it was uh, the family's um, rec room. So I made a deal with my wife. Usually the guys want the garage. I told her if I can have that 10 by 20 as my studio, she can have the rest of the house. She agreed and she's been good. She kept her word, but I'm in the house. So it's, you know, close to the kitchen. We have a little bird that flies around and that's why I had to get green, but I wanted to get, stick with oil paints and I don't like the water mixable oils. I just never liked them. So I found Bristol Magic and I love it. The medium I use, I used to use Liquid Original, which is flammable. It has some harsh stuff in it. It's a great product, but it's not green by any stretch of the imagination. And then I found um, a Elkid, a Walnut Elkid Medium made by M. Graham. It's a company uh, in the U.S. actually, in the Pacific Northwest, I believe. And it's uh, walnut oil based. So it has just a small hint of vegetable oil smell. Again, non-flammable, no carcinogens, nothing harsh, nothing bad whatsoever. Completely green product. So that is my medium. And then I choose paints that don't have harsh minerals in them. So no cadmiums, no cobalts, no manganese, none of that stuff. You know, instead of cad yellow white, I use lemon yellow. Instead of cad red, I use alizarin crimson, stuff like that. So my studio is green. And it makes it really nice because I can paint for an entire day in the winter time, like, you know, now when the windows are all closed and stuff, and there's no adverse effects on you whatsoever. So if you'd like any more information, just, you know, leave a comment. And I can, you know, if you want, I'll do an extensive video just on the supplies I use. And um, you can kind of price them out yourself. But Jerry's uh, Artorama and uh, Blick Online are both very similar in pricing. I think they're very similar in what you need for free shipping, which I think is like $59 for each of them, which for art materials is nothing. And uh, they're both reputable outfits. I mean, Jerry's and Blick have been around forever. So, you know, it's not like you're using something that you're not sure about. And uh, they always do have the really good stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna save the highlights and whatever else I'm gonna do to the fir trees and the deciduous trees in a little bit. The water's annoying me, and this is annoying me, so I'm going to take care of that now. Okay. So, that is Raphael. My crazy parrot. Actually, my wife's parrot, not mine. Because he hates daddy, but he loves mommy. Okay, so I'm just going to take some white. And I'm just going to go this. Okay, what am I doing? Other than making a mess? I'm blending it in, I'm getting it opaque, and then I'm going to add blue. And that actually was a little bit too much. With a trusty knife comes in, get rid of it. That was too much. There we go. That's what I wanted. Now, all of a sudden, the water looks opaque. I'm going to bring it right up to that green and let a little bit of that green get into the water too. I'm also going to let a little of this brown get in. I'm not going to do it with this brush. I'm overlapping a little bit, but not a lot. Okay, so now I've got the water opaque. Okay, but that doesn't look like water. Okay, what does that look like? That looks like a mess. If it was a little darker, it can almost go for ice, but with all the green around, that wouldn't work. Okay. Doesn't matter. Now it's opaque. It doesn't have the real um, transparent look like everything, like all this does now. So we're starting to get all our thicker paint like I promised you. Okay, taking my same brush with nothing, not cleaning it. Okay, a little bit of Payne's Gray, a little bit of uh, French Ultramarine. And there is a difference between French Ultramarine and Ultramarine Blue. 
I don't know what that is other than I don't like ultramarine, but I love French ultramarine. Okay, I'm just gonna use the side of my brush. Put her on. There we go. Now, one of the things you're going to want to do is make sure you keep all your strokes horizontal. Water is flat. If you have your strokes angled and stuff, it's just going to look odd. That's another thing the uh, human eye will pick up on. Okay, now I'm going into the water from the land. I want to get some of that dirty color into the water. Get your face right in it to make sure you got a good line up there. There we go. Doesn't that look much better already? Okay, now as you can see, now there's a blur between where the land and the water start and stop, which is not a big deal. I wanted to get away from just pure blue, okay? I love pure blue water in my dreams. I've seen a couple of places in Montana on the one time I went to uh, Glacier National Park that can probably get a blue look to it. In the tropics, I just seen pictures. I've only been in the tropics one time in my whole life and I saw the real green and maybe a couple of blues from like a drone going over. Overall, it's the color of its surroundings. And this is its surroundings. This is its surroundings. The sky isn't a perfect blue. This is its surroundings. So it's gonna have a little bit of offness to the color. So what we're gonna do now, it's gonna go with brown and sap green. And I'm going to get my border. Now, because of the way the water is, I want this to also be horizontal. Okay. These are just little areas coming out into the water. I'm going to get a lot more green. Couple of minutes. It's going to be virtually, not completely, but virtually, no more of the transparent color that we started with the entire canvas with. we go. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm not going to put a lot in. I'm going to put a couple of water lines into the water. I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. I'm probably going to use a palette knife here. I'm going to make them I don't want crazy lines everywhere in the water. I don't want this to look like a crazy river. But I do want the impression of the water. There we go. 
try to keep these straight too, but these aren't as crucial because waves of the water go all over the place. right up on the edge so it's clear cut where the water and the land meet my shoulder and everything's not too much in the way you can see that there we go okay get rid of our knife take our same 32 inch brush that I've yet to clean today matter of fact I believe the only thing I've cleaned is both fan brushes one time each, maybe, maybe twice, but I think it was only one time. Okay. I want to complete the water. And to complete the water, the water itself is done, but I got to get the edge. Once the edge is done, then that'll leave this foliage. So I'm going to take Payne's Gray, French Ultramarine. I think you've heard that mixture before. Just lifting up. I want dark reeds, leaves, stuff like that. Coming off the land into the water. You want these reasonably dark. They're getting lighter as they're blending with the lightness of the water and the water lines. That's why you want to keep loading your brush with fresh color to keep it dark. You could use black hair, but black is a dead color. In my opinion, I prefer Payne's Gray. But you can definitely use black if you choose to. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do, what, this is permanent rose. If you notice, I'm putting this on very thick. Got an old beat up fan brush with the texture that I absolutely love. But I'm putting this on, you can tell it's real thick, and I'm gonna leave it on thick too. The other thing I'm gonna do is add a little bit of white and different places on it to vary the red. But this permanent rose, look how bright that is. Now, there is one thing that I'm gonna do and I do on all my paintings that I encourage you to do. Wherever you introduce a color into your painting, okay? If it's not one of your main colors, which already is somewhere else, introduce it in another part of your painting. And the reason I say that is it'll give your painting color harmony. It won't be like, oh, it's only in this area. Nature rarely is like that. So, perfect example. Sap Green, Payne's Gray, Van Dyke Brown, and Yellow Ochre, and French Ultramarine have been everywhere in this painting, including in my land, my trees, everywhere. So that is the color harmony. This permanent rose hasn't been anywhere. I haven't touched it, okay, until now. So if that's the only place that it's at, it's going to look silly. Now, in other areas, it doesn't have to be as intense See how this is pretty intense? It doesn't have to be. Just areas. You just want the indication of it in places. Okay? Just so 
it's not alone. Now, when I get done with this, I'm going to put more in over here as little flowers and stuff in between these trees. But for right now, putting it in the mid-ground. Sparingly. And again, nice and thick. I don't know if you can see the texture on the video. I hope you can. But it's thick. And now, if you remember, when those trunks were thick, I used the shop towel to wipe it off. I'm not going to... Uh, to not wipe it off, but to uh, dab it to where the thickness comes off. Now I'm not doing that. These are final stages type of things. I got a lot to do on this painting yet, but certain areas are going to be final stages. I'm not going to do anything more to the flowers and so introduce a little bit of thick white to break it up a little bit, maybe a little yellow, just to vary the colors. Actually, I might not put any white in it at all. I might just do yellow now that I'm thinking about it. But it's still going to remain thick, okay? It's still going to have that nice, lush, deep color. Actually... Let's do some of that right now. Now, here's the beauty of it. I'm going to add yellow instead of white. And even if I added white, I don't have to add the white or the yellow anywhere else because I got white and yellow coming all over the place. But I am going to put blue flowers in. So I started doing bluebells. They have them at the Morton Arboretum in Lyle, Illinois. And uh, obviously it's mid-December, so they're not there now. But they're a very beautiful flower that my wife and I love. And this year, I made a concerted effort to start putting bluebells into uh, my paintings. And I love them. I just wish I would have done it a long time ago. There's something about those blue flowers that I just love. Okay, so now, lemon yellow. Thickly. And I don't know if you can hear it or see it or whatever, but I'm not tapping hard. I want it to blend a little bit. But I'm not hitting it crazy. Now, because this is orange, I'm going to add a little bit here. There we go. Maybe just a little bit more. There we go. Okay. See how that looks on the video. Okay, that's coming through pretty good, actually. And I am going to crop this in a little bit so it'll bring it up a little closer when I do my editing. So hopefully that'll show up real well for you when I do that. Okay. Now, let's see what we're gonna do with the ground. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two inch brush. I'm not going to add any paint to the brush itself, but I am going to tap in grass. This is relatively thick and you know, we had done this. So now I'm going to tap it. And basically what I'm doing is if you remember when I first tapped in without adding paint, you know how I sketched in with the real thin color of that green that's behind these tree trunks and branches. And then I used the little one inch brush to make foliage patterns. I'm doing the same thing with the two inch brush here. And this will give it that texture before I add on. Cause like right now it's brush strokes. I don't want brush strokes for grass. See how when you get rid of those brush strokes, 
in the grass that looks so much better. But brush strokes in the sky, depending on how thick they are and how you do them, looks great. You have to just determine when you want brush strokes, when you want tap, when you want foliage, when you want whatever. The beauty of doing landscapes is they're very intricate in some ways, but they're very forgiving in other ways. See now, all those reeds I'm grounding, okay? Because I'm making those little grass impressions. And I'm burying them into the grass so that looks like it's part of it. Okay, we are officially done with the real thin part of our painting. Everything from here on out, as you can see, nothing is real thin. So, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use straight yellow with, it already has some of the permanent rose mixed in like this. That's going to be a grass color. Now this one, you can probably tell from the way you can hear it or not, I'm not tapping this anywhere near as hard as I did previous. Because I don't want this to blend in as much as I want it to sit on the surface. And I'm also going to put red in here, I'm going to put some blue in here, I'm going to put some Payne's Gray in here, I'm going to put everything. Because the grass is going to be everything. And it's going to be relatively thick, not as thick as this but still thick. Okay, now it's time for a little Payne's Gray. Remember how we did that up here? Same thing over here. This is the part that's very tedious in a painting, but I enjoy it immensely. It's got to be difficult to watch it in a video, so I'm hoping you're not um, fast-forwarding it, moving it up, because this part, as tedious as it is, it's important. Because one of the things I'm doing here is I'm, I want different colors everywhere. Okay, so I've got my yellow and red mixture here a little bit. Gotta be careful when I'm doing this and I just hit it with my finger. Okay, now I got my Payne's Gray in here. Payne's Gray is great. If I decide to do something else with it, all I have to do is touch it with the yellow and boom, I got a nice bright green. So that's cool. But I want some yellow ochre in here because I want variations. You know, your lawn might have the same color green most of the time if you got the right weather and everything else. But when you go to the forest reserves, when you go to the woods, when you go to wherever, it's not the case. It's a little of everything. It's all over the place. And that's one of the beauties, one of the many beauties of landscapes. I mean, I live in Illinois, not too far from Chicago, as I've told you. We've got the Cook County Forest Reserves pretty close. It's on the way, I pass them when I, on the way to uh, my folks when my wife and I go there for dinner. And Maple Lake, Saganasty Slough, Joe's Pond, places like that that I paint. Beautiful. You wouldn't believe Chicago's so close by. And they've got a little variation of everything. Okay, now I've got everything covered. But what am I missing? I don't have this bright red. That bright red is going to stay thick, just like it was here. And I'm going to introduce it in different areas here, but not everywhere. So, there we go. A little bit over here. A little bit there. there right here I'm 
Much better. Okay. Now, the bluebells shall come out. The bluebells are nice because um, they're basically French ultramarine and white. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've been mixing colors all throughout this painting. So I've got um, a little bit of everything in this. But I'll make them a little darker in some areas. So I'm going to put the bluebells. I just love the way these look. What's nice about the way I'm doing them here is it almost looks like a shadow, a deep shadow. But they're actually flowers. Now, we've got all of these colors up here, but we don't have the blue. So, so I am not part of do as I say, not as I do. Put a little bit in the mid-ground. A little bit lighter. There we go. That's the color I'm looking for. A little bit darker there. got that all over the place. And if you bear with me for about 20 seconds, I'm going to clean my one inch brush here. Okay. Now we're going to be getting to the point where I wanted to clean the brush because now I want to get all of this into here, up and around the tree. So we're going to start with the blue. Now I'm going to wipe it off. And I'm going to clean it. Because now I want the red in there. But I'm not going to mix the two. I'm going to have the red in a different place. So I don't want the red and the blue to mix together in this particular one. I might make it pretty lavender or something, but I'm not into that for this particular thing right now. Now, I'm going to wipe it, but I'm not going to clean it. I'm just going to add a little bit of white to dab onto them to give the flowers just a bit of brightness and a little contrast and a little bit of why not. this 
one area I didn't like where it And that's another beauty of oil painting. You get to scrape it up with a knife if you screwed it up. funny some of these little places like this can be some of the most difficult and it's only because of what your eye is telling you you want like too much white went on there for my for my uh, taste so now I'm adding a little bit of extra red and blue There we go. Much better. Okay. Whew. Like I said, sometimes the little areas can be the biggest pain. So my next thing is going to be the fir trees on the right. And I need more yellow. One of the things you're going to find out the more you get into oil painting, but especially landscapes, is you go through white, yellow, and blue quicker than anything. Red is the other primary. Obviously, white's not yellow. Um, red and blue are the primaries. Red, you don't use as much as you do blue and yellow. And obviously, white, you just go crazy. Okay, so... I want this thick, and then I'm going to make different designs here and there with it. And what I want to do, basically, I'm going to thicken it up. And I could have used the two inch brush. I still may. But I like this one for See, I'm using a stroke similar to what I did on the trunks. I'm, it's hard to see because I'm doing it pretty fast. And I'm using that to thicken it up. You see how I'm filling in a lot of the blanks now? Well, not blanks, but a lot of the area, making it, I guess I'm making it more dense. And I'm not cleaning my brush either. I'm not even wiping it. So the green and the Payne's gray and the brown and everything else that was part of this originally, that's mixing, is mixing on my palette as well. Now this one I'm gonna go a little bit more Payne's gray. There we go. Much better. Much better. One of the things that there's a really great artist. Um, he does a little bit of oil, a little bit of watercolor, mainly acrylics. I don't even know if he does um, videos anymore, but he did for a while. And his name is Jerry Arnell. And if you've done any kind of research on uh, YouTube about painting, regardless of the medium, your his name is bound to have shown up. Jerry Arnell is an exceptional artist. He makes his oils, I mean his uh, acrylics look like oil paints, which I've never been able to do. And one of the things that he always preached was kind of, and I'm paraphrasing, I'm not quoting him, knowing when to say when. Basically, 
don't piddle header or whatever. I forget how he says it. Um, but basically what he's trying to say is don't overwork it, don't overthink it. So right now, my goal was a very thick painting at the end. That's what I have, okay? Part of me wants to smoothen this out a little bit by tapping it in a little more to make it smooth. But the part of me that's listening to Jerry Arnell is gonna leave all that texture. You see how thick that, I hope you can see how thick that texture is. Very similar to this. I don't want to flatten it out by overworking it because my brain is going in overboard saying, no, that's not right, no, that's not right. In art, like a lot of things in life, but especially in art too, and in painting, most times, most times, less is more, okay? Especially in this case, less is more. Okay, now I've got quite a bit of green left on my palette, which is a very good thing. Because now I'm going to do all these. So just like I told you before, I need more Payne's gray. Just like I told you before, our basic mixture we started with was Payne's gray and sap green, and then a lot of our medium to make it very thin, very transparent, okay? Now, we're gonna do the same thing without any medium. Now we're gonna go straight, Payne's gray and sap green. We're gonna get real dark. There's a lot of white here from the highlight that's gonna lighten it up, and then we're gonna go over it again with dark. And then once we get our pattern for our trees and stuff, once we get all that kind of scoped out, then, if it's too thick, I'll dab it, not wipe, but dab with the paper towel. We'll add the highlights with the yellow, and then we'll be calling it a day. Okay. So, we're going to take our one-inch brush that, believe it or not, is clean. It's just a permanent rose, lizard crimson, a lot of the reds, stain bristles. So, it's actually clean. You know, nothing coming out but it's just uh, stained. So you don't have to worry about red getting into it, which by the way, regardless of the time of the year, that still wouldn't be bad because there's so much red everywhere else. You can put red leaves in, so that doesn't matter. Okay. Let's do our stuff here. I hope you're enjoying this video and getting something out of it. If you are, Please consider giving it a thumbs up, liking it, however it goes. I'm not very fluent in online stuff, but I know some stuff. I've been pretty good lately with uh, once a week, every Sunday I believe it is, putting up a new video. So you can always consider hitting that subscribe button if you uh, think you can get you know any kind of value out of this. And uh, so we do. Now, one of the things I want you to notice, I'm not just, okay, if you remember back to when I did this part, I just boom, 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 touched it and left. Here I'm concentrating in certain areas. And I'm making shapes with it. See how that's a cluster, that's a cluster, that's a cluster. So I'm not just going boom, 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 like that. I want to make clusters. I want to cover most of my branches and leaves and everything else, but not everything. I want a certain amount. To be visible, just like normal trees. I mean, depending on the time of the year, you're going to see very few branches in trees, regardless of where you go. Okay, this is like a summer day. And we're going to leaf the heck out of this thing. I still can't believe it's Christmas. A week from today, Christmas Eve. Amazes me. Our time goes by so fast. It's funny, when I was a kid, I couldn't wait to get older. My pop always said, hey, be careful what you wish for. Because the older you get, the quicker it goes. And that was one of a million things pop has always been right about. It's funny, though, as a kid, I thought he had no idea. <laughs> Whoa, that was stupid. 
top head. All the answers. Mom was pretty damn good, too. Mom was psychic, though. I can never put anything on past her. Funny thing is, she's 78 years old, and she's still psychic. Okay, now I'm bringing this right down into here. And this is not open like in some areas here. And the reason I'm doing that is it's a lot lower. It's going to be a lot more in shade, shadow, same thing. And I'm going to put more down here. I'm going to put some more of this real dark over here to make a few little bushes. And I'm going to put a couple at the very top. But you see how I got the trunks running through here and there. Okay. I went overboard a little bit with this, as you can tell. I don't care. I'm having fun. I am having fun. I rarely don't have fun when I paint. I'm covering some of these because I didn't like the way that comes out. So this dark is going to keep it to where I'm going to have some inside here. And I'm going to have other stuff. So you're going to see some. But not all. kill that red there I like it I don't want to kill the yellow under there I like it okay mm, ugly isn't it actually I'm gonna cover all this the red and the blue are a mistake over there soon to be rectified now I just showed you how to rectify a situation that you don't like. Where did all my trunks go? Well, there's one. Where's the others? Don't know, don't care. You don't believe me? Go in the deer breed them. Go in the forest reserves. Go anywhere. You're going to see trunks here and there, everywhere, nowhere, all this other stuff. The thicker and the denser it is, more uh, rain we've had at the time, whatever the case may be, the less you're going to see anything but leaves which is what you're going to see a lot of here shortly. However, this is extremely thick, which would be good if that was the final stage, but it's not. So, I'm going to do this twice. Now, be sure you put it on and don't wipe. Okay, I'm wiping like this, but the shop towel is not moving. Okay, so that way, and I'll show you what I mean. Now watch. Okay, look at what came off. And there's still a lot more to come off. So now I'm going to take it, see where it's real thick. Dab, dab. Dab. Throw away. Get one more. And that's going to be for here. Again, you can rub this as best you want, as much as you want, as hard as you want. Just don't wipe. Make sure that the uh, shop towel doesn't move. Otherwise, it'll smear it. Okay. Watch this. Look at all that thick excess. Now, what we're going to do, and I'm going to probably need more of it, but I'm going to use what I have at the moment. I'm going to go with the yellow. Okay. 
<sighs> Gotta get my edges here real quick though. Now here you can wipe because it's just the edge. There we go. Thick paint is beautiful. Thick paint is, in my opinion, the way oil painting was meant to be painted. However, you have to be careful of when you're thick. I'm not doing anything else to this or this, so that thick ugh, right there is perfect. This, I still had another stage I had to do. So that's what you have to determine. Where in your process, your thickest, richest, deepest colors need to be at the end. Otherwise, you're going to make a lot of mud, and it's not going to be pretty, and you're going to be upset with me, and then that's not going to be good. Okay. Now we'll go with yellow. And this is still thick, but we'll see how we can do it. There we go. Now, one of the things I'm going to do here that we didn't do before is I'm going to wipe it off. Maybe not every time. I uh, do it, but most of the time. I want that paint to really and remember patterns. Okay, I'm not just tapping anywhere. I'm following the same pattern that I had before. Now, another thing too, you've got a lot of beautiful darks in here. Don't get rid of them all. Leave the darks. You can't have light without dark and vice versa. So you need them all in there. And you see how thick this is. But you see how good it's going on? It's because we took off that major thickness stuff first. Now we're going to change colors a little bit. And I'm absolutely loving the way that's looking. Loving the way that's looking. I want to go a little yellow ochre. I want to change it up a little bit. Remember, wherever you introduce one, put it in other places. Okay, now I go back into those reds.
Okay, I gotta put a little bit of thicker red on top of that white. I put that down as a base. A little bit of blue in there, and then we are gonna be done. Actually, I gotta squirt off just a hair more red. I can't get it thick enough. And it's actually permanent rose. Don't have enough to get the thickness it needs. It's gotta sit on top. Just like that. That looks, that's what I was looking for. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, moms and dads, and kids of all ages. Yeah, I'm aging myself with the Bozo reference. That's it for this landscape. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, let me know. If you didn't, let me know. And I'll see what I can come up with that maybe you will like. I hope everybody has a great uh, Christmas week. A week from today is Christmas Eve. Hope everybody has a very safe, happy, and Merry Christmas. And uh, I'll see you next week. Next week, I'll probably do a painting a video on Saturday because Sunday is Christmas Eve. So I hope to see you then. Bye.